Now, when it comes to starting the new job, a lot of candidates come unprepared or they come almost like an, as an open slate, looking to learn as much as they can, which is a good thing, of course, but we're not as strategic as we should be. And in this video, I wanna unpack and share a few big tools which you should apply every time you start something new. And so the first tool in your toolkit should be STARS Framework. And STARS Framework, by the way, comes from the book called First 90 Days, which you can also pick up. But ultimately, you know, if you have a STARS Framework, you're way ahead of anyone else starting in a company because you need to know where you are ought to start. You need to know what type of business it is. Is it a shaky ground? Is it stable? Is it small? Is it big? Is it in the middle of change? You need to know all those different things before you proceed because your strategic plan is gonna need to adapt to that. And STAR stands for Startup Turnaround Accelerated Growth Realignment, sustained success. It's not necessarily linear, but basically any organization at any point is gonna go through these stages. And it could be that your organization is a team of five people or 20 people or a department or team of teams of thousands. And all of these are gonna have its own unique challenges. For example, if you join startup, the challenges there are gonna be about building the strategy, structures, systems. You're starting from very, very scratch. You're gonna need to do some recruiting recruiting, you're going to need to make do with limited resources. If you're to join the second one, which is a turnaround, then you need to save the business. There is almost like a struggle town which you need to pick up. You would need to re-energize demoralized workforce, let's say a team or your you know, teammates, peers. You're going to need to make very hard, effective decisions under time pressure. It's almost like a buildup from a startup, which is not doing great. Now, the third one is accelerated growth, and it's basically putting in a place and structures and systems to permit the scaling. So meaning, you know, after the turnaround, if everything's successful, you kind of build up on that establishing processes, design operations, let's say would be one example, or design systems or investing in research capability. This is where you would do it. Now, the next one is realign, is basically going full circle and now something is not working out or maybe you scale too soon in the accelerated growth stage and now you need to fix up things or patch things up it's again need to re-energize people you need to carefully restructure things you need to almost reflect and maybe prioritize what product to support which not so you know if you were to join a workforce where it's a product or a service they might need to trim down the slack and then reevaluate where do you focus something to keep in mind and the last one is sustaining success, which is quite hard, but is basically if an organization now does well, your product thrives because that life cycle of stars repeats itself. And it's just a matter of time before the standards drop, let's say. So how do you maintain it? How do you create good defense systems so that, let's say, if some people leave or something is restructured, how do you actually sustain a good user experience? I guess what's important also is to simplify this framework even further so you can immediately apply it. If you would take out the accelerated growth, which basically is just building up on that winner's effect on success of kind of getting more, integrating more new processes, building up the teams, things of that nature, which you're not necessarily going to be much involved in, but maybe you're a senior designer or a design leader who is actually investing in that. So it definitely would be something to look at. All four of those could be summarized in this quadrant between learning and doing and also offense and defense. And if you would look at it this way, you would see that, for example, in startup and turnaround scenarios, you need to do a lot. You're going to need to do way more than learn a lot. You're going to need to learn as you do. And let's say in startups, you're going to need to employ a lot of offense in turnarounds, a lot of defense. Meanwhile, the realignment and sustained success, you're gonna need to do a lot of learning and re-evaluation, reflection time, learning from the mistakes, iterating, making good decisions and making even more good decisions if you reflect and you know that they are that way. And in realignment, you need, again, more offense. And in a defense on the opposite side, you would need to be much more defensive. That's one way to look at it. So again, Tool number one or tool number one, two and two, you need to reflect and understand who you are joining because your approach is going to be very, very different. And now, without further ado, what I'm going to share with you is what I did next, which is basically create you a tangible checklist, which you can follow in your first 90 days split into three 
part. You could apply this to almost any scenario. And I also know that a lot of you might be, let's say, contracting or doing freelancing gigs where you just have a few weeks of, you know, work to do until you have to jump to the next client. That's totally fine. I guess this is more applicable for permanent employees who are there for at least a few years of work and they are committed to that. So see how, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. But ultimately, for the majority of you, it should actually resonate and you can make it actionable. And so this checklist is actually split into three big parts plus one. The three parts are first 30 days, then the next 30 days, and the last 30 days, which basically makes three blocks in a 90 days, right? I'm adding another one, which is super critical, which way too many people just overlook and it's a shame and it's before starting. I already covered in one of the live streams, maybe you've seen that highlight where I say that you should deeply immerse yourself even before the project starts and pre-discover things on your own so that you are effective from day one and you can build on top of your hypotheses and build that knowledge up. Customers and users, who are they? You can research online, you can discover a lot of things. Same for competitive analysis. What else is there? If there is no such product in the market or you know what they see a lot of juniors kind of start to panic because they say, oh, but there is no digital stuff or there is no app like this. Well, your customer base you want to target or your future client wants to target is using something. Maybe you're using paper. Maybe you're using a service, one-to-one -one interaction with another person. That's your competitor. Cover that. What does the current offering looks like? Do you have any feedback on it? Can you find it online? Find that out. Next one is deep immersion in actual subject matter. So podcast articles, books, immediately get on. In a few days, you can roughly outline the landscape of what that subject is like. And chances are, you're going to need to start fresh. You're going to learn as you go for those 90 days, but start now. You are going to come from very informed background and your questions are going to be smarter and people are going to engage with you faster because you're going to understand the lingo. You're going to understand what typical challenges look like. You're going to understand abbreviations and everything in between, which are super technical or super soft. And so once you're done with that, it's all about learning. You need to reflect if it's a startup where you're going to need to do a fair bit of doing or is it established company where it's, let's say, in sustained success or accelerated growth stage. Again, refer back. First 90 days, what I would advise you to do is schedule one to ones of all stakeholders to understand their objectives, challenges, motivations and goals, meaning you have to start building trust of individuals. It could be business representatives, engineering, product data scientists, other designers, you name it. It doesn't matter, but you need to start establishing yourself as a person first, as a specialist. Then familiarize with existing offering and its human experiences, the UX of existing stuff, where it's at, existing project user research and its state. And then you need to engage with real users. You need that interaction. You need the first-hand experience to understand what the actual users go through. And then referring back to that very first instance of actions, you should build on top of the discovery knowledge you already have. You surely come up with some hypotheses as you deeply immerse yourself in a subject matter. Start filling in those gaps. Familiarize with existing roadmaps, objectives, goals, and measure. Engaging with product, with let's say researchers or other people within the business is gonna be fundamental here because you need to start outlining what are you actually after. Then evaluating the design maturity. How good is it? What level it is? Try to understand where the design currently is. And then schedule and get into ceremonies, routines with your direct line manager, whoever that is. You need to start building trust and regular interactions. The next one is to plan and contribute to working groups and the project itself. As you do that onboarding and learning and doing, you're gonna need to start and become much more effective. And then secure the early wins, meaning discuss and agree the expectations and define success criteria for your next 90 days with your manager. This is where you define exactly what you're going to be accountable for and to what extent, where you should focus, where you should ignore, kind of agreeing on the scope and aligning exactly this is what we're after instead of trying to do it all. Once you get into the routine of learning and contributing, you're going to need to first and foremost seek to understand. And 
as we talk about relationships, which is really important, you're going to do much better in these scenarios if you seek to understand first before you contribute. It's active listening, it's actually observing and under trying to deeply understand where the people are. That's why you need those one-to-ones of a stakeholder. Because if you don't understand what their objectives are, agendas, previous challenges before you joined, what worked, what didn't work, then you're just gonna contribute a wild ideas and people st gonna start writing you off, which you don't really want. And you should start participating in more strategic planning efforts. You know, it doesn't have to be lavish. Again, it depends on the role, seniority, you name it. But you have to start putting in and chipping in if you're thinking and prioritizing those strategic opportunities or how you reflect on your work, what the tactical plan to achieve it is, how you prioritize where you focus, what you ignore. Now, the next one is super important and follow up on the previous stakeholder one on one, which I actually got told off by one person already that, hey, it depends on the business. Of course it does. So make sure it makes Makes sense with your organization because you could be a company of two people or three people or 1,000 or 100,000 people. So this has to make sense. But the principle here stands that you need to connect with people outside your immediate reach. Start identifying and further develop the trust across the organization. You need to almost start being known more and more so that when the time comes, they know who to contact, let's say. They know who is working on that thing or in that part of the organization. And of course, it's gonna be difficult, it's gonna take time, but you need to start doing it. The next one is quite funny, and this is the free amigos or triad, or whatever you call that circle of trust of your level people, who let's say could be product manager and engineering, and you form this, let's say, weekly or fortnightly type of ceremony or session where you get together to discuss quickly, align something or maybe do daily chat or whatever it is, but basically forming this tiny squad of decision making where you can get into alignment before you approach, let's say, the business representatives, if let's say it's an agency consultancy or a bigger organization, you name it. So there is a lot of different dynamics here, but ultimately having that triad between engineering, product and design works really well because then you don't go on your own, you don't work in isolation, you basically focus on the same objectives together. Next one is identifying the channel to share the stuff you work on. It could be Slack, it could be brown bag lunches, it could be things, but the sooner you can start sharing what you're contributing with, and again, it's gonna come through natural working teams and ways you already do, but if you can come up with a process or a system of doing that so that it's not forgotten, so that you don't get forgotten working in isolation on something like research, which only two people might see, try to see how you can open it up. It could be that you wrap it up in a quick pack and send out and say, hey, this is where research is or a mirror board or opening it up to wider groups or wider stakeholders. Again, you need to be tactful, but sharing is always a good idea. And the last part is that last 30 days, which is basically about the results so far and what you can do next. So reflecting on the design maturity and committing on improvement area or two is a big one. Again, that's why I asked for you to kind of think about it holistically and say, this is where we're at. This is where we could be. These are the steps we could take. You should bring it to your, let's say, line manager and say, this is what we need to focus on. How can we make it happen? It's going to show initiative. It's going to show strategic thinking. As long as it's not just bold, uh, you know, open claims, you have to support of some evidence and then you can take it forward. Next is requesting 360 feedback because chances are if you've been already 60 or plus days, you can start reflecting of where you're good at, what you should be doing better to fit in in the organization or add even more value. Evaluating personal contribution and project outcomes today is also going to come. So maybe you draw from the feedback from, you know, line manager discussions or your peer feedback. This is a perfect time to mend the course or do something different or improve on certain bits. And then reflecting and discussing the progress of the line manager. Again, reflecting on that success criteria you set to date and agreeing on the next steps. It's a reflection time, basically. So how can you actually do better in the end? And once that's done, it's all about planning and initiating something next you have to do. And again, this is going to vary depending on your organization. But in a perfect scenario, your 90 days could look like this. 
Now, the link to this is gonna be available down below, so you can just download a PDF, print it out, stick somewhere and tick the boxes or just use it to inform your own actions. Make your own list ultimately, because again, you're gonna join an organization if it's unique challenges and unique setting. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Any thoughts as well, smash that like button, subscribe. And on that note, I'll see you next time.